couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another full fingerstyle arrangement lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. And in this video we're in for a double emotional whammy because I've prepared for you a fingerstyle medley, a mashup between Against All Odds by Phil Collins and Father and Son by Cat Stevens. Yep, these two songs work tremendously well together. You can play these two as separate arrangements, of course, but why not learn both if you can, as both strike the same proverbial emotional chord, if you will. So I'm gonna play it for you first so you can see in here how it goes, and then, as usual, we're gonna break it down lick by lick, chord by chord, finger position by finger position, with tabs right here on the screen. So um, it goes like this, enjoy. So against all odds begins with this. Right? D minor and G. That's the intro. D minor, you simply play an arpeggio from the fourth string to the first. Then the open E string. Then three on the second string. And you have enough time to transition into G. Three on the sixth string. So and then you can arpeggiate the chord if you like. You can leave it at that and repeat it. Or just add a simple arpeggio, just plucking a few of the chord's strings. And then you start with A minor, but it's more of an A5 here. It's two and two on strings three and four. five times, right? You don't have to play all the notes. You don't have to adhere to the lyrics verbatim. Right? Just three times, including the rhythm, works. And, <clears throat> sorry, um, you play it, and then it's zero two on both strings, 
And when you go back to two, I put fingers four and three, okay? The pinky and the third finger. Because then I slide into B5. Okay? So I slide from two to four. So it creates this effect. Okay? And then after I play the four, I play two on the fifth string. Okay, so the A bass remains just a little bit more than it should, but it doesn't hurt the arrangement, it just creates a B over A chord. Okay, as soon as possible, I play the bass. Okay, got it? I'll play it slow. After the slide to four, I play the two on the fifth string, the B note, then I play four, four again on strings three and four. Then it's completing the harmony into B minor, so three on the second string. You play the four, four again, and then three on the second string. So, okay, and then C. The whole chord, strings one, two, three, and five. And then, okay, three on the second string, three, three, one, and then three again with D5. Okay, it's three, two, and zero on strings two, three, and four. Okay, and I leave the E string open because the harmony there is supposed to be D minor, but if you play D minor, it sounds a little bit weird. Listen to it. That F note there, for some reason, sounds out of context. And the ear wants to hear D major there, but D major is not in the key of the song. So it's better to leave it as D sus, because we're gonna have the open E string in a second anyway. So... C. 3-3-1, three, three, and then 3 again on the second string with D5. Then three on the second string, open E string, then F, okay, with one on the E string being the melody, then open E string, three one on the second string, so then it's three on the second string with G, then the open E string, open third string, okay, so it's F and then G. And then open second string, open third, and then the E bass, indicating E minor. Okay, you can put E minor on. Just so you can arpeggiate it or strum it. And then three on the second string, then one pull off to zero on the second string with the A bass. Okay, I play the A bass before the pull off. Okay, between the one and the zero. And then it's two on the third string. Now, this is all A minor. You can harmonize with the open third string. Okay? For A minor seven, um, just hinting at that harmony. So it's... Okay? Nothing wrong with that. And then you can end with two and two on strings three and four, just hinting back at the harmony you started with. Okay, it's called a motif. Uh, if you want to get technical. So uh, then you have this. Okay. Three on the second string, open E string, then D minor, the whole chord, then one on the E string, three on the B string, and then two on the third string, then is this. Okay. It's an uh, arpeggio of F, and then G. So, um, we were on two on the third string in D minor, and then we have one, twice on the, e, on the B string, two on the third string, three on the fourth, okay? Now, if we play this, we have the bass note um, as a note in the melody. So, I add one on the sixth string with my thumb. So, okay? Then, Two pull off to zero on the third string, into G. Then you can do a G sus 
to G by playing one on the second string and then the open second string. You don't have to. Uh, if you do, it sounds like this. Okay? Now, you don't have to. You just play G and it's fine. And that's the verse. So A minor, A5 to be exact. Slide to B5. B minor, C. D minor or D sus2 and then actually D sus2 F G or G6 if you want to name the chord correctly because it's the open E string then E minor to A minor and then D minor F and then pull off from 2 to 0 on the 3rd string into G and then G sus and G if you want to do it you don't have to um, some people say that the suspended move is a cliche but again we're playing an 80s song and 80s songs actually defined what cliche is in popular music so why not do it anyway um, so then we have the chorus it starts with this It's zero zero three pull off to zero on the E string, and then three one one on the B string, then the C bass, and then three on the second string, open E string inside the C chord. So you can play uh, the notes of the C chord and harmonize with it anytime you like. So you can play the whole chord with three on the second string. Then it's A minor. Okay, so I just indicate the A bass note in the tab because you don't have much time to play the whole chord there because in a second you'll play strings 3-2-3 three, 2-1-2 two, three. Okay, two, two on strings 3-2-3 three, three, uh, inside the A minor chord so uh, just know that after you play you just go to A minor and you play the bass note that's the important note here then as I said, strength 3, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, inside A minor. And then you do a C shape up two frets on 3, 4, 5. And that's D for us. Okay? It's D add 9, add 11. But again, names don't matter here. It's D for our uh, purposes in this arrangement. You can play the whole chord, the whole set of strings if you like. And then I do this. I played 3-3 three, three on the second string, then I played the D bass again, I slid from 3 to 1 on the second string, then 2 on the third. So, okay? And you can play the 3 again as you slide. Okay? Or, okay? or just wait a moment and then slide. Uh, depending on the embellishment and the sound you want to produce. Then you're still on D, so uh, be careful not to play the A bass there. And you can emphasize the D bass again. Then play 2-1-2 two, two on strings 3-2-3 three, three again. Then you slide into 5 on strings 1-3. Okay? Uh, using a bar. And then you play the A bass. So it's... Okay? And then 8 on the second string. So, okay. then open E string twice, giving you time to go back to F, okay. play the F, and then open E string, 3-1 on the B string, and then this. Okay. Um, it's a bit of a change from the original line, which is... But I decided to use the fact that we're arranging this into a more guitar-like finisher. Um, I just added one extra note to the line actually, creating a rhythmic change there. So basically it's the same line but more guitarish. Um, so F and then one hammer on to three on the second string, open E string, D minor. 
Um, then you can pull off one to zero on the E string or play zero. So it's right, or and then three one on the second string, two on the third string. This is the extra note I was talking about. And then the open E string, then G with three on the second string. And basically you play the three on the second string and then the G chord. So um, Okay, the bass note, the chord comes after the last note of the, of the line, of the melody line. It's called the syncopation. So then you can play the chorus again. And then the intro again, going to father and son, um, or not if you don't want to play father and son, if you want to play it separately. But before we learn father and son, let's go over the chorus again. It's C, A minor. D. Then um, this again. Then it's this A minor, F, D minor, A, or like the original, just without two on the third string. So it's A. Either way you want to play it is fine. Then. Now, instead of three on the second string, I play the open second string. Okay, because then I play okay, the beginning of the riff. Actually, I want to make the transition, so I'll play this once, and then the second time. Okay, or even just just the G and then indicating it the rhythm of father and son creating a very smooth transition and then the third time I'll play the riff now for the riff for G um, on the father and son riff you put G on like this you have to uh, fingers three and four the pinky and the third finger because, um, well, you put them on strings one and six, both on three, because you need fingers one and two for one and two on strings two and four. Okay, hope that didn't confuse you. Okay, you strum four times with G, and then the fifth time, which is an up strum, you put one and two on strings two and four. This creates a C over G or A minor seven over G. It's the same thing. So if it's A minor seven over G, it's a minor seven. So it's more true to say um, that it's uh, C over G, but you can call it both. That's the beauty of naming things in music. So that's the intro. So down, down, up, down, up. Okay, the last up strum, adding the two fingers. And then you play strings two, one. Okay, on one and three. Then you take the third finger and put it on three on the third string and you slide from three to five and then five on the E string. So you keep the pinky there. So then you have the song itself. Okay, zero, one, three. Get used to it because it's a repeat. Um, zero, one, three on the second string into G. Then again into D. Okay, nothing fancy. Against all odds is a lot more complicated than this one. And then zero, one, three again into C. So the same line into G, into D, into C. the second string, open E string, open A string, open G string, and you put one and two again on strings two and four because this is A minor seven. So just put them on because you want to accompany yourself after you play. You don't want to leave it this, the open strings. Um, so then zero hammer on to two or Zero, 2 okay, you can pick them, you don't have to hammer on. And then the open second string into G. And then into E minor. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, same line. Now we have different endings. The first ending is this. Okay? It's I hammer on from zero to one on the second string, then the open second string. Then the open second string again with A. And then two to zero on the third string, and then two again on the third string with the D string. Okay, so it's minor to D. Then you go over everything again from the G to the E minor. And then. Okay. Then you have the second ending. It's this. Okay. It's one zero on the second string. You can pull it off. You can just pick both. And this is a minor again, so you play the A bass. Um, not yet, actually. Now you play the A bass with zero two on the third string. Okay, and then the D string for D, or you can play a D chord any way you like. Okay, you don't have to play the chord notes, just the notes of the of the arrangement and the bass notes, and just play a little bit of rhythm. Uh, any way you hear it, and then um, you go back anyway to the verse again. Now, these were the two father verses. Now, the two son verses, um, I shortened them to one verse. You can, play, you can play them as two verses, but it's actually better if you play it as one verse because otherwise the song starts to repeat itself too much and become boring without the lyrics and without the dual voice part where the son answers the father. And since this is a guitar arrangement, it's better if we just play the son verse once. And the change between the verse, uh, the father's verse and the son's verse is that instead of D at the beginning, you have B minor. So it's A, G, and then B minor. Okay, so when you play three, play it with B minor. Okay, and then play the B bass. Then again, C, A minor seven, and then G, E minor. Then you have the sun's ending. The sun's ending is this. Okay, and then, and then go back to the intro. So it's the one zero zero on the second string. Okay, and when you play the second open and second string, you play the D bass with it. Then two zero on the third. Then open fourth, open third, and then the G bass. Okay, so it's D, G. And then zero three on the second string into D again. Okay, I like to vibrate the chord there. Okay, so I play two on the third string as well. And then it's Z, uh, one zero on the second string. C bass, three on the fifth. Two zero on the third. And then the intro. And then I finished it like this, going back to the up and then ending on the open second string with G. So that's the medley, that's the lesson and before you go practice this please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There are a ton of lessons waiting, just check the playlists. There are songs I arranged years ago which you haven't yet learned, I'm pretty sure of that. And um, if you're new then what are you waiting for? Go and binge watch the lessons and learn whatever you like, it's free, including the tabs which the link, the link to which you'll find in the description below, uh, it's free. Go to the website, download the tab for free. Everything on Lincoln Earth is for free. But if you want to give something back anyway, there's a large blue donation button right above the tabs. You can't miss it. It's large, it's blue, it's a beautiful button, uh, says donate. And everything goes right back into Lincoln Riff, into making the lessons, making the arrangement, working on the lessons, editing them, producing them. It all takes time and effort. So, um, if you want to give back and help producing the lessons, I'm grateful for whatever donation you choose to make. So thank you in advance for it. 
I'll see you in the next lesson. You go have fun with this. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.